Linear B is a syllabic script that was used for writing Mycenaean Greek, the earliest attested form of Greek. The script predates the Greek alphabet by several centuries. The oldest Mycenaean writing dates to about 1450 BC. It is descended from the older Linear A, an undeciphered earlier script used for writing the Minoan language, as is the later Cypriot syllabary, which also recorded Greek. Linear B, found mainly in the palace archives at Narsus, Sidonia, Pylos, Thebes and Mycenae, disappeared with the fall of Mycenaean civilization during the Bronze Age collapse. The succeeding period, known as the Greek Dark Ages, provides no evidence of the use of writing. It is also the only one of the three linears to be deciphered by English architect and self-taught linguist Michael Ventris. Linear B consists of around 87 syllabic signs and over 100 ideographic signs. These ideograms or signifying signs symbolize objects or commodities. They have no phonetic value and are never used as word signs in writing a sentence. The application of Linear B appears to have been confined to administrative contexts. In all the thousands of clay tablets, a relatively small number of different hands have been detected, 45 in Pylos and 66 in Knossos. From this fact, it could be thought that the script was used by only a guild of professional scribes who served the central palaces. Once the palaces were destroyed, the script disappeared. The script Linear B has roughly 200 signs, divided into syllabic signs with phonetic values and ideograms with semantic values. After the third meeting in 1961 at the Wingspread Conference Center in Racine, Wisconsin, a standard proposed primarily by Emmett L. Bennett, Jr., became known as the Wingspread Convention, which was adopted by a new organization, the Comité International Permanent des Etudes Mycenaen, affiliated in 1970 by the Fifth Colloquium with UNESCO. Colloquia continue. The 13th occurred in 2010 in Paris. Many of the signs are identical or similar to those in Linear A, however, Linear A is encoded still as an unknown language and it is uncertain that similar signs had similar phonetic values. Syllabic signs The grid developed during decipherment by Michael Ventress and John Chadwick of phonetic values for syllabic signs is shown below. Initial consonants are in the leftmost column, vowels are in the top row beneath the title. The transcription of the syllable is listed next to the sign along with Bennett's identifying number for the sign preceded by an asterisk. In cases where the transcription of the sign remains in doubt, then its number serves to identify the sign. The signs on the tablets and other ancient artifacts often show considerable variation from each other and from the representations below. Discovery of the reasons for the variation and possible semantic differences is a topic of ongoing debate in Mycenaean studies. Special and unknown signs in addition to the grid the first edition of documents contained a number of other signs termed homophones because they appeared at that time to resemble the sounds of other syllables and were transcribed accordingly. Par 2 and Par 3 were presumed homophonous to Par. Many of these were identified by the second edition and are shown in the special values below. The second edition relates. It may be taken as axiomatic that there are no true homophones. The unconfirmed identifications of asterisk 34 and asterisk 35 as I2 and I3 were removed. Par 2 became QA. Other values remain unknown, mainly because of scarcity of evidence concerning them. Note that asterisk 34 and asterisk 35 are mirror images of each other but whether this graphic relationship indicates a phonetic one remains unconfirmed. In recent times, CIPEM and inherited the former authority of Bennett and the Wingspread Convention in deciding what signs are confirmed and how to officially represent the various sign categories. In editions of Mycenaean texts, those signs whose value has not been confirmed by CIPEM are always transcribed as numbers preceded by an asterisk. C. 
CIPEM also allocates the numerical identifiers, and until such allocation, new signs are transcribed as a bullet point enclosed in square brackets. Speaking and pronunciation The signs are approximations each may be used to represent a variety of about 70 distinct combinations of sounds. Within rules and conventions, the grid presents a system of monosyllabic signs of the type 5 CV. Clarification of the 14 or so special values tested the limits of the grid model, but Chadwick in the end concluded that even with the ramifications, the syllabic signs can unexceptionally be considered monosyllabic. Possible exceptions, Chadwick goes on to explain, include the two diphthongs, and, as in, Icupit Joe, Fragupteosin, Okewa, for Orgawash. However, a diphthong is by definition two vowels united into a single sound and therefore might be typed as just V. Thus, as in, Erewo, for Li1, is of the type 105. Diphthongs are otherwise treated as two monosyllables. Aroyura, Frorins, of the types C, V, and V. Lengths of vowels and accents are not marked, and the more doubtful and may be regarded as beginning with labialized consonants, rather than two consonants, even though they may alternate with a two sign form. Oda and Oda Tuwita for Oda Twenta, a C, Y, Joe, and a S, W, I, Joe for Aswios. Similarly, and begin with palatalized consonants rather than two consonants. T R for T R J A. The one sign Chadwick tags as the exception to the monosyllabic rule is, but this he attributes to a development P T E less than asterisk P J E as in klepte less than asterisk K L E P J E I. Linear B does not consistently distinguish between voiced and unvoiced stops and between aspirated and unaspirated stops even when these distinctions are phonemic in Mycenaean Greek. For example, parte is pater, parsi is phasi, p on the other hand never represents beta. Beta alpha sigma iota lambda epsilon upsilon sigma is qac reu, koru is chorus, kara we is gros, kono is skoinos. Exceptionally, however, the dentals are represented by a t series and a d series for unvoiced and voiced. To so for two so's but do ra for dora, however, to ra ke for thorax. In other cases aspiration can be marked but is optional. Pute for futa, but fute re for futris. Initial aspiration may be marked only in the case of initial or in really. Heart hey ro for hateront and yet an ia for han i. The J series represents the semi-vowel equivalent to English y, and is used word initially and as an intervocalic glide after a syllable ending in i. A jo for alpha o micron sigma, a time et jo for rho tau epsilon mu iota tau iota o micron sigma. The W series similarly a semi-vowels used word initially and intervocalically after a syllable ending in U. Kuwano for quanos. The R series includes both the R and L phonemes. T repo for tripos and T reso for telesos. The Q series is used for monosyllables beginning with a class of consonants that disappeared from classical Greek by regular phonetic change. The labia velas. These had entered the language from various sources. Inheritance from Proto-Indo-European, assimilation, borrowing of foreign words, especially names. In Mycenaean they are, K, Pagram, and Reli, Kh, in names and a few words. A pi qo ro for amphicoloi, qo u ko ro for guocoloi, qo ita for phio micron nu tau eta sigma. Some consonants in some contexts are not written. Word initial s and w before a consonant, as in pima for sperma, syllable final l, m, n, r, s. A to ro qo for anthro, quos. In the first example, the P, which was primarily used as its value P of grid class 105, is being used for spur, not in that class. This was not an innovative or exceptional use, but followed the stated rules. Similarly, A, being primarily of grid class 5, is being used as an and could be used for AL, AM, R, and so on. 
clusters of two or three consonants that do not follow the initial S and W rule or the double consonants. She, Xi and Q use were represented by the same number of signs of type 105 as the cluster had consonants. Kono so for nosos, kuruso for krushos. The consonants were the same as in the cluster. The vowels so introduced have been called empty, null, extra, dead, and other terms by various writers as they represent no sound. The sign was not alphabetic. Rules governed the selection of the vowel and therefore of the sign. The vowel had to be the same as the one of the first syllable following the cluster or if at the end of the word, preceding. T repo with T to match re. Ideograms linear B also uses a large number of ideograms. They express the type of object concerned, a unit of measure. They are typically at the end of a line before a number and appear to signify the object the number applies to. Many of the values remain unknown or disputed. Some commodities such as cloth and containers are divided into many different categories represented by distinct ideograms. Livestock may be marked with respect to their sex. The numerical references for the ideograms were originally devised by Ventress and Bennett divided into functional groups corresponding to the breakdown of Bennett's index. These groups are numbered beginning 100, 110, 120 etc. With some provision of spare numbers for future editions, the official CIPEM numberings used today are based on Ventress and Bennett's numbering, with the provision that three or four letter codes based on Latin words that seemed relevant at the time are used where the meanings are known and agreed. Unicode encodes 123 linear B ideograms. The ideograms are symbols, not pictures of the objects in question, e.g., one tablet records a tripod with missing legs, but the ideogram used is of a tripod with three legs. In modern transcriptions of linear B tablets, it is typically convenient to represent an ideogram by its Latin or English name or by an abbreviation of the Latin name. Ventress and Chadwick generally used English, Bennett, Latin. Neither the English nor the Latin can be relied upon as an accurate name of the object, in fact. The identification of some of the more obscure objects is a matter of exegesis. Archives Corpus inscriptions in Linear B have been found on tablets and vases or other objects. They are catalogued and classified by inter alia, the location of the excavation they were found in. Another 170 inscriptions in Linear B have been found on various vessels, for a total of some 6,058 known inscriptions. If it is genuine, the Kafkania pebble, dated to the 17th century BC, would be the oldest known Mycenaean inscription, and hence the earliest preserved testimony of the Greek language. Besides that, an inscribed clay tablet was found in Eklana dating to between 1450 and 1350 BC. It is claimed that a Linear B inscription is attested on an amber bead found as far at Bernstorf, in Germany. Chronology Timeline of Bronze Age Eastern Mediterranean Scripts The Sequence and the Geographical Spread of Cretan Hieroglyphs Linear A and Linear B The three overlapping, but distinct, writing systems on Bronze Age Crete, the Aegean Islands, and the Greek mainland are summarized as follows. Timeline of Linear B The main archives for Linear B are associated with these stages of late Minoan and Helladic pottery. Controversy on the date of the Knossos tablets The Knossos archive was dated by Arthur Evans to the destruction by conflagration of about 1400 BC, which would have baked and preserved the clay tablets. He dated this event to the LM2 period. This view stood until Karl Blegen excavated the site of ancient Pylos in 1939 and uncovered tablets inscribed in Linear B. They were fired in the conflagration that destroyed Pylos about 1200 BC, at the end of LHIIIB, with the decipherment of Linear B by Michael Ventress in 1952, serious questions about Evans's date began to be considered. Most notably, Blegan said that the inscribed stirrup jars, which are oil flasks with stirrup-shaped handles, 
imported from Crete around 1200 were of the same type as those dated by Evans to the destruction of 1400. Blegen found a number of similarities between 1200 BC Pylos and 1400 BC Knossos and suggested the Gnossian evidence be re-examined, as he was sure of the 1200 Pylian date. The examination uncovered a number of difficulties. The Knossos tablets had been found at various locations in the palace. Evans had not kept exact records. Recourse was had to the daybooks of Evans's assistant, Duncan Mackenzie, who had conducted the day-to-day -day excavations. There were discrepancies between the notes in the daybooks and Evans's excavation reports. Moreover, the two men had disagreed over the location and strata of the tablets. The results of the reinvestigation were eventually published by Palmer and Boardman on the Knossos tablets. It contains two works, Leonard Robert Palmer's The Fine Places of the Knossos Tablets and John Boardman's The Date of the Knossos Tablets, representing Blegans and Evans's views respectively. Consequently, the dispute was known for a time as the Palmer-Boardman Dispute. There has been no generally accepted resolution to it yet. Contents The major cities and palaces used Linear B for records of disbursements of goods. Wool, sheep, and grain were some common items, often given to groups of religious people and to groups of men watching the coastline. The tablets were kept in groups in baskets on shelves, judging by impressions left in the clay from the weaving of the baskets. When the buildings they were housed in were destroyed by fires, many of the tablets were fired.